Retired Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling joins us now. He served as the commanding general uh, to the U.S. Army in Europe. Mark, welcome. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, good um, to be here. Yeah, it's good to have you here. D does Ukraine have the resources to really stand up to Russia in any way, shape, or form? Well, my experience there, John, uh, in the last few years has been that they were building a much stronger army. They had quite a few reforms going on, but they certainly don't have the strength or the power. But as I've said before, I think they will certainly stand up as best they can. And what does that mean, do you think? Well, it, they're outnumbered significantly in both number of forces and in equipment. Uh, Russia has model, modernized over the last few years. I think the Ukrainian uh, army is very nationalistic for the most part. There are certain elements on the eastern part of the country that are leaning toward the Russians, and that's causing some challenges now. But my experience with uh, the Ukraine leadership and their army is that they're becoming a very professional force after many years of transformation. But how much do they depend on NATO and the United States? Well, they certainly depend a lot. We, uh, we conducted several exercises. In fact, in July of 2012, I, I participated in an exercise called Rapid Trident with Ukrainian army in a place called Lviv, which is on the western part of uh, Ukraine. There were 17 other NATO allies and some non-NATO partners participating in that operation. And I think their, their desire was to show the strength that NATO was behind them as an independent country. Uh, you know, it was interesting. I saw that over 40 percent of their exercises, the Ukrainian military's exercises over the last few years, have been with NATO partners. Only 11 percent of their exercises have, have been with Russian forces. So it's an indicator of which way they're leaning, certainly. So Secretary of Defense Hegel has told the Ukrainian leaders he's going to stand with them. What does that mean? Does that mean military support as well? Well, you don't know. And I think that's up to the policymakers to decide. All I can comment on is I think Ukraine has an unbelievably strong and very nationalistic force. Uh, they had some good leaders. The, the, the commanding general of the ground forces when I was there, Colonel General Vorobyov, was fired uh, in January of this year, as well as a few other forces within their defense establishment. So I think that Yanukovych was attempting to destabilize the military before all this happening. And it just shows, I think, that that on the Russian side, there was an, a, a continuous attempt at destabilization of Ukraine, and we're seeing more of that today. Can I get your opinion of this incident involving the USS Donald Cook and the, and the Russian jet that yeah. buzzed maybe a dozen times that ship? How unusual is this? Well, it's, it's very unusual, especially given some of the protocols that the, the Navy and, and the European Command has had with the Russian military forces over the last few years. We have attempted to do better partnering exercises with them. There are protocols for these kind of things, and it's just not done. It's an unprofessional act uh, by the Russian military, whoever ordered that or whoever did it. So are they just uh, what, thumbing their nose at the United States? I think so. Uh, and what, what I'd also comment on is the, the extreme professionalism of the sailors on the USS Don Cook unbelievable restraint when something like that happens because it is a thumb your nose and it and it's going to take an action like this uh, with an accidental reaction to cause some problems between the United States and, and Russia but they're coming very dangerously close to doing exactly that. That of course is the big fear. General Mark Hurtling. Mark good to have you on the program. Thank you.